something I touched upon in my episode 10 review is how I think the events at Storm's End and the death of Lucerus could be the catalyst to making Aemond Aegon's most steadfast and loyal supporter. But the changes made to the death of Lucerus at Storm's End could be used to create some meaningful character development for both Aemond himself and Aegon. In Fire and Blood, the narrative we have presented is Aemond intentionally attacks and kills Lucerus with Vagar, and it was not an accident as seen in the show. While a minor change in the wider canon of the show and the book, it does add a depth to Aemond as a character. And I think it is this depth which is going to be vital in season 2 when he should be playing a much bigger role. I've been very positive about House of the Dragon season 1 and felt most of the changes did help turn Fire and Blood from a history book into a complex story with intriguing characters. However, something that did catch me off guard a bit is the strained and almost resentful relationship between Aegon and Aemond. It didn't seem to reflect what we did know about them as people in the books, with Aemon being Aegon's arguably most fierce supporter and most loyal without question. Even as kids, we see several examples of this coldness in their relationship, most notably Aegon's complicity in the bullying of Aemon in the Dragon Pit, and their differing attitudes toward Aegon's duty to marry Helena. This develops further in episode 9, when Kristen Cole and Aemon are looking for Aegon in order to crown him. It is made very clear through Aemon's conversation with Cole, there was quite a lot of resentment from Aemon towards his brother and his lack of acknowledgement of his duty and fitness to be king, with Aemon suggesting that he himself would be better suited to rule. But like I said, this all left me scratching my head. Changes from fire and blood are of course inevitable. However, this is not the direction at all I expected from Aemon's character, especially in terms of his relationship with Aegon, given what fire and blood does actually tell us. But then, when watching episode 10, and seeing the death of Luke at Storm's End was in fact an accident. That Aemond lost control of Vagar, it all just suddenly clicked for me. No one is going to believe Lucerus' death is an accident. Aemond has a long-standing vendetta with Luke ever since he lost his eye after claiming Vagar. This resentment is seemingly fueled by the fact there was little or no justice to the damage done to him. Even during the dinner scene, we can see the events have seemed to have little impact on Lucerus as a character, who despite everything, still low-key mocks Aemond. This very public vendetta in combination with the confrontation at Storm's End very much makes the killing seem more like murder than an accident. Be that in the history books, his family or the average common person is going to have a hard time believing Aemond did not just straight up murder Lucerus. I think they're going to use this to add much needed character development to both Aemond and Aegon, which will see them reach the level of loyalty and trust they have in Fire and Blood. The way I see it playing out is once Aemon returns to King's Landing and the events at Storm's End come to light, he will try and plead that it was an accident, but no one will believe him, not Alicent or Otto or even Kristen Cole. They will rightly believe Aemon did this out of malice. No one will believe his account of events. No one, except Aegon. I think Aegon will be the only one to believe his brother, and I don't think he will question it that much. This will be the catalyst that brings the brothers closer together, with Aemon becoming Aegon's most loyal supporter and most feared general. They will not only add much needed depth to both Aemon and Aegon, but get both characters to the point in the story they need to be at for the start of the war. This is why I love House of the Dragon, because it can use the bigger narrative given to us in Fire and Blood, but expand upon the smaller details, allowing the creation of some complex and compelling characters. I would describe it a bit like a colouring book. A strong, clear outline, with the writers adding vibrance and depth filling in the outline with colour. If you want to take the idea a little further, I think the fact no one will believe Aemon's story will ultimately be the reason he doubles down. He will embrace his reputation as a kinslayer and become the monster and feared general he is known to become later in the war. All this growth and development is all possible simply because of how the writers chose to handle Storm's End. I think ultimately it will turn out to be a, a very vital and smart move. Don't get me wrong, I do miss the version we got in the book and would have loved to have seen Aemon just kill Luke without mercy or hesitation because that is the Aemon that fans know and love. But by going down this different path, it's allowing the audience to see Aemon become the infamous right-hand man of Aegon we know and love from Fire and Blood. Mm -hmm.